I know you're excited about getting started making this money. You'll be even more excited when I show you that a limited few of you can become my partner, which is a fantastic deal. This is the smartest investment you've ever made. You've ever made. You've ever made. You've ever made. Get Rich Quick guru William J. McCorkle and his wife indicted. Born 1966 in San Antonio, Texas, little is known about the early life of one William Joseph McCorkle. What we do know is that McCorkle was originally born William Joseph Gonzalez, but took on the McCorkle name from a late stepfather. Sometime in that early life, McCorkle and his family would move to Florida and McCorkle would attend Bishop Moore High School in Orlando, graduating in 1984. By all accounts, McCorkle was an average student, and post high school, he worked a number of odd jobs, including bussing tables and going as far as exotic dancing. Before eventually setting his sights on real estate, it was during this time in his foray into real estate where he met one Chantel Watts, a British citizen who would become an integral part of building McCorkle's future empire. Now we don't know how well McCorkle did in real estate in Florida during this time, but it seems he did well enough to expand into other ventures, especially that of the burgeoning infomercial market. During the late 80s and early 90s, television and its markets were expanding. Options were plentiful and the advent of cable meant there was more media to consume. But with this new consumption, networks, both local and cable, had to find ways to fill in dead space. And so the infomercial came into being. Infomercials still exist today, but they're far less prevalent and impactful, as you don't have as many eyes with everything being streaming and digital. In the early 90s, it was fairly easy to buy blocks of time on a network or several networks and have your ad run, usually between the hours of midnight and 4 a.m. Now it's important to note that infomercials themselves aren't scams or deceptive. In fact, several popular products and brands have been featured on infomercials over the years. But McCorkle took advantage of networks and cable channels who didn't have the highest standards when it came to their infomercial output. This led McCorkle and his wife to team up to create a series of infomercials in which McCorkle would represent himself as having made millions of dollars from various real estate secrets that he has garnered over his career. And for his part, McCorkle was happy to sell these secrets on to the viewer. Each of his infomercials released would all begin the same way. They would all show McCorkle and his wife in various expensive homes. It would show them driving luxury and exotic cars, riding in helicopters, and standing on boats emblazoned with his own name. He would state that this good life could be yours, and it was as simple as simply ordering one of his educational training courses. Hi, I'm William McCorkle. 
I've already shown you how to become successful in making money using my system with Bargain Real Estate. Today, I'm going to show you how to find bargains at government auctions. We're going to show you how to purchase beautiful cars, beautiful houses. We're going to show you how to make some fantastic deals. McCorkle and his wife would come together to sell various video cassette tapes on television through their infomercials. These tapes and assorted courses would promote various get-rich-quick schemes, including instructing viewers on how to make money through foreclosed real estate. They would show his wealth with Robin Leach, famous as the host of the television show Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, appearing in one video segment introducing McCorkle as, quote, one of the most remarkable real-life success stories. These sorts of videos are nothing new, with several fake influencers and scammers using the same outline to scan consumers on various social media platforms today. What was different in the case of McCorkle comes in the form of something much deeper and much more nefarious than simply selling quickly and cheaply produced videotapes. Federal prosecutors in the case against the McCorkles stated that the pair intentionally misled customers and had refused to issue refunds to those customers who were dissatisfied with their purchase. McCorkle claimed, via his infomercials, that he would put up his own money for customers who had found property through his methods. Better your life? I'm going to do something more importantly than that. I'm going to back you up. And in this agreement, it shows that I'm going to be there 100% to back you up. It shows in writing, my name and your name, we're on a contract. When you find these deals, you fill out the contract, you send it to me, you got my signature, which means I am bound to you for my money to do the deal. He also claimed that he would split any profit when said property was eventually sold and that he could be reached 24 hours a day and offered a full and complete refund for those not completely satisfied. Prosecutors noted that these claims were simply not true and that the pair were bringing in upwards of $6 million a month from sales of their videotapes and workbooks. The McCorkles contended that they never misled anyone who purchased a video cassette, and that they had in fact issued refunds to those who requested them. But several people came forward to say that they were in fact deceived by McCorkle and his company. Juan Marquez, an insurance salesman, stated that he purchased one of McCorkle's packages for the televised advertised price of $49.99 after he saw one of his infomercials on television late one night. When he received the course, Marquez noted that an important part was missing. The contract that would allow him to partner with McCorkle in order to put real estate deals together. When Marquez inquired about the missing contract, the most important portion of the package, he was told that the contract was actually included in a separate package that would cost him $900, nearly $2,000 today when adjusted for inflation. Another man by the name of Don Crichton invested $1,500 into one of McCorkle's packages in the early 90s in order to make some extra money to help support his family. When he received the package, he realized that it would not work out for him and he tried to request a refund, but stated that the refund line was never answered and that no one at the McCorkle office ever answered the line that he called. Now these are serious charges, but they simply scratch the surface of the larger scheme that the McCorkles employed in order to build their wealth off the backs of their customers. The indictment charges violations of wire fraud, mail fraud, money laundering, and conspiracy. William J. McCorkle and his wife Chantel are charged, along with two of his employees, Brian Higgins and Sammy Smith. 
Federal authorities say William J. McCorkle's business is nothing more than a scheme to defraud. The pair were charged with fraud relating to their business and the claims made within their videotapes, as well as the use of illegally obtained credit cards through an alias. The pair was also hit with money laundering charges relating to the moving of $7.1 million into offshore bank accounts after the state probe on the company had begun. In the short span of six years, it's estimated that the McCorkles brought in anywhere between 40 and $50 million through the sale of their videotapes and instructional materials. It came out during the trial that the signs of wealth the couple had presented in order to drive sales was in fact a fabrication. The homes, cars, boats, and everything seen in the pair's videos were all rented or leased for use in those videos, and that the satisfied customers within their testimonials were friends of the couple, employees of the business, or paid actors. Now the pair's defense countered the charges by stating that the McCorkles paid some nearly three million dollars in refunds and that the pair sold several products that left many satisfied and even allowed some to make money, although these claims were never verified. Wynn tells us that McCorkle's television infomercials are currently airing in all 50 states. No word on whether his business will be shut down. Will be shut down. Shut down. At their peak, the McCorkles built an empire off the backs of their infomercials, and while not rich to begin with, they ended up wealthy, if only for a very short period of time. But quickly those luxuries disappeared. The fancy suits and dresses replaced by prison orange. The fancy homes replaced by concrete walls. And the fancy views swapped for metal bars. In the end, the pair served as the poster children for infomercial fraudsters. And their sentences served as a warning to others to think twice before trying similar scams. A jury found the pair guilty of 151 different fraud and money laundering charges, handing down the sentence of 24 years in prison to the pair. During the reading of the verdict, Chantal McCorkle began to weep uncontrollably. For his part, William McCorkle passed out and quickly jerked away after the first 13 guilty verdicts were announced. The verdict reading itself was temporarily suspended as McCorkle was led out of court and taken by ambulance to a local hospital for evaluation of symptoms related to a possible anxiety attack. For her part, Chantel McCorkle wept so much during the verdict reading that the judge threatened on several occasions to have her removed from the courtroom if she did not calm down. The charges were so immense that the reading of the verdict lasted well over two hours, and less than an hour in, Chantal's own mother burst out into tears and had to be escorted out of the courtroom. But as she was being escorted out, she shouted to the judge and jury, quote, Let me go. Nothing but bastards in this country. You don't know what you've done to her. Maybe most surprising of all was the amount of supporters the McCorkles had in court. Over a dozen friends, family, and former co-workers were in the galley, all wearing yellow ribbons to show their support for the pair, but especially for that of Chantal. In the end, the pair would spend 18 years in prison after appeals for their six-year infomercial scam. A scam that would leave the pair penniless in the end. But supporters of Chantal would continue to show support, calling the prosecution evil and trying to highlight 
how little money most people lost in the scam. A website was even later created, freechantel.com, that lasted up until her release. Following the conviction, Chantal would divorce her husband and eventually be transferred back to the UK to finish out the remainder of her term, being released in June of 2010 and earning a number of certificates while in prison. William McCorkle would serve his term in a federal prison before spending some time in a low-security work camp prior to his own release in July of 2014. Little is publicly known about William McCorkle today, as it seems that he's been keeping a mostly low profile since his days as the infomercial Scammer King. Thank you for watching this episode. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as your support helps this channel grow and allows us to create more videos. Thank you again for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video.